Hey everyone, Ryan from eBike Escape. Got an interesting one for you today. Let's get into the review of the Le Mans Dutch electric bike. Before we get started, if you are looking to purchase a Le Mans electric bike, I'd really appreciate it if you use our link down in the description before you make your purchase. It's a free and easy way to help support the channel and makes videos like this one possible. Thank you so much for your support. Also, if you're looking at other electric bikes or maybe looking for some electric bike accessories, be sure to check out some of our resources down in the description, especially our new one, our recently announced shop. Shop.ebikeescape.com has a ton of accessories that you might be interested in. With that, let's get into the walk around, then we'll get into some first person riding footage, and finally, some third person riding footage where I'll give you my concluding thoughts on this electric bike. To begin with, Le Mans is a brand that has been around for some time. If you've been in the cycling industry at all, you're familiar at least with the name. And if you're not, just know that the company has lots of cycling routes known for their high quality bikes and now they have jumped into the electric space. This is the Le Mans Dutch, which we'll talk about its specific features, but they also offer a prologue, which is a little bit more of a traditional frame style. Both bikes are premium electric bikes, undoubtedly, priced at $54.95. Now we'll get into all the components and talk about what justifies the high price point, but just know that the Dutch is optimized for an upright riding position, and it's basically decked out with high quality Shimano components. And the reason I chose to review the Dutch is of course because it's more unique, and we saw a ton of bikes that look like this during our recent travels to the Netherlands. And I'm also a huge fan of this mid-step, which is actually a super low step for accessibility. And I wanted to review the Dutch because I wanted to be able to talk about some of these unique features and showcase an electric bike that has some features that you might not be familiar with. Some of these design aspects might be new to you. And to be honest with you, if I had to choose between the both of these electric bikes, the Dutch is the one that I'd personally prefer to buy and to own and to ride. And we have really been enjoying our time with this electric bike, having it around for a few weeks now, both my wife and I have been consistently choosing this electric bike over other ones in the garage. So first let's talk about this beautiful looking frame. It's a thing that you notice first when you see this electric bike in person and it's just decked out in carbon fiber, all carbon frame, fork, handlebars, stem, seat post. It does have aluminum wheels, but you can opt for carbon fiber at checkout if you'd prefer. That will cost you an additional $1,800 and all that carbon fiber means that this bike is super light at 27 pounds without any accessories. And the whole idea behind this electric bike is, well, if you run out of battery, you can still pedal it. Stay tuned for the first person riding footage and I talk a little bit more about that. And just generally at checkout, you can opt for additional accessories. The one I would personally highly recommend is this kickstand. That'll cost you $38 extra but I also had them throw on the carbon fiber fenders, which I think really look cool. And of course this bike is meant for kind of cruising and commuting around so those fenders can come in handy. Now for $250, the fenders aren't cheap, but they don't add much to the weight either. And you can just tell they're designed for this bike. Let's jump into sizing again in the premium territory. You can expect different sizes and no surprise, it's offered in three different sizes. Small for riders five foot two up to five foot six, medium for riders five foot five to five foot 11, and large, that's the size you see here, for riders five foot 10 to six foot five. And for reference, I'm six feet tall when you get to the third person riding footage. The bike has a 250 pound capacity and basically this is a direct to consumer electric bike for the most part. So they ship this in a box and they have very good assembly instructions and it's not too difficult to assemble. And even better, the assembly before they send it to you is all done in the United States. So you can expect that the brakes are gonna be perfectly dialed in, the shifting is gonna be all set to go. And that's not something that we usually see with direct to consumer electric bikes. And if you're paying a premium price is something that you'd almost kind of expect. 
The company sends all the tools that you'll need to assemble the electric bike, and they even give this tool to you that helps you get the torque right because of course, that's something that is super important on a carbon fiber electric bike. You don't wanna over tighten anything on this bike, so either take it to your trusted bike shop or make sure you're using the tool that they include very carefully. The Dutch is offered in three different colors, noir or black as you see it here, ice blue and a color that I think is really unique, Rosa. That's actually the first Dutch that I rode when I was visiting cul-de-sac out in Tempe. Shout out to Ryan Johnson who owned one of the Rosa Le Mans Dutch electric bikes. And that's really where I fell in love with this electric bike. So I'm really happy to be able to do a full review now. All right, let's jump into all the components. We have Shimano hydraulic disc brakes paired with 160 millimeter Shimano rotors. These brakes perform extremely well. We have some Le Mans branding. This is a through axle, which gives you a little bit more rigidity compared to a quick release. It's also a little bit more precise as well. For tires, we have 700 by 38 C tires. I believe these are Le Mans branded tires. They are pan erasers, brown sidewalls, and for sure set up for street riding given they're a little bit more narrower. I already talked about the optional carbon fiber fenders, which give you full coverage. And just check out some of this cable routing right into the front fork here. Again, all carbon and coming out the brake line right here. Just a note that the tubes are using a Presta valve instead of a Schrader. So if you're looking to buy this electric bike, make sure you have a bike pump that fits to Presta valves. And as we go through this electric bike, I think it'll be pretty obvious how much time the company spent on design. In fact, when the front tire is lined up perfectly straight, it kind of matches up with the head tube here. There's an integrated front light right into the handlebars and it's actually pretty bright. It turns on automatically when you turn the bike on. We have the front brake line that comes down, but then all the other cable routing is done internally right into the down tube for a nice clean look. Moving on to the cockpit, we have these ESI grips, a brand I was previously not familiar with. They're just foam grips, but they're surprisingly comfortable. Shimano levers to match the Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. And just a note, there are no motor cutoffs. Usually we see those on other electric bikes, but this bike also doesn't have a throttle because it's a class one electric bike. So not something that's necessary. And another nice thing is if you're not putting brakes on that have motor cutoffs, it pretty much opens it up for any brake that you wanna put on this electric bike. Now this cell phone mount does not come on this electric bike and you'll notice that there's no display on here as well and no controls. We'll get into that more in just a second. On the right side for a shifter, we have a Shimano Rapid Fire Plus RS700. It is a 11 speed trigger shifter, really high quality component. They're using some of the gravel components on this electric bike from Shimano. And you'll notice that there is no display up here, no controls, and that's because they're using the Male system. I first saw this on the GTE grade that I reviewed. That was a gravel electric bike. I'll turn it on for you here. This is where you'll control all of your pedal assist levels, but they do offer a optional control up here on the handlebars that you can add. It costs $130 extra, and that is something that you might wanna consider. Now there are only three pedal assist levels, so you might not be changing them as much. You just have to reach down for it, so something to be mindful of. Green is gonna be the lowest level of pedal assist. Pushing it will get you into orange, and then of course, red pedal assist. Now to get an idea of the battery capacity, once you're in a level of pedal assist, say I go to red, the bike does turn a color and that color does coincide to the current battery capacity. We'll throw up a picture on the screen just so you have an idea. And that's really how you tell battery capacity unless you're using the mobile app. Let's go into the Male My Smart Bike app and it's really easy to connect to your electric bike. And we have a more accurate picture of how much internal battery is left, 66%, as well as range. You can go into e-bike options, there's motor map. I have left this bike in sport mode, which gives you 60, 80, and 100% in all of the pedal assist levels, one, two, and three. But you can change it to urban if you'd prefer, eco, or you can really customize it to your liking. There's last connection where you can see where your bike was last seen. Engineering mode, e-bike information, there's also status. 
You can also track a ride and there's a bunch of information in here. So you might actually wanna use your phone while you're riding, say get a cell phone mount such as this one, shop.ebikeescape.com. There's also an activity section where you can see which rides you have recorded, news, as well as additional settings. So that's it for the mobile app. Nice and simple, easy to use. Moving on from there, the battery is hidden very nicely into the frame. We have Le Mans branding on the down tube. This is the Male X35 Plus, and this is a 250 watt hour battery housed right into the down tube. Something that I think about with some of these stealthy electric bikes is winter storage living in Wisconsin. This is a bike that I would have to put in temperature controlled storage or perhaps bring inside over winter because the battery is not made to be easily removed. Of course you can for any maintenance or if you need to buy a new battery, but that's best to leave for a bike shop to do. This is a 36 volt system and Le Monde is estimating a 40 to 70 mile range. Of course, that's only made possible by this bike being completely carbon fiber. The bike comes with this e-bike motion charger. It is a two amp charger and the port is right here, has a nice rubber cover. Now you do need to make sure that you're installing this correctly, but once you have the cable lined up correctly, simply put it in and then it does lock into place by turning right here. On the seat tube here, a class one sticker, 250 watt motor, 20 miles per hour max speed, and assembled in Tennessee with quality sourced components. Le Mans opted for the GRX group set from Shimano. That's their gravel category of components. Simple flat pedals with a little bit of grip, and reflectors, these are union branded. The kickstand, if you opt for it, is located on the rear out of the way of the pedal, so you can move the bike around very easily or just pick it up as I've been doing in the garage. Again, the cable management is excellent. Again, this rear brake line integrated right into the frame and usually on some of these electric bikes underneath the frame, you'll see some cables come out and that is not the case on the Le Mans Dutch or Prologue. Another nice touch are these rear lights integrated right into both stays. And even in daylight, they're pretty visible. They are not actuated by the brake, they're simply on. For a saddle, we have a Sella Royale Izenza Plus. And this saddle is actually really comfortable. Of course, that's personal preference. You can check out our electric bike accessories list for some additional suggestions. But riding this electric bike around, a lot lately. This has been a very comfortable seat and my wife agrees. Here's a look at the rear, a bolt-on rear axle, and there's a look at that super tiny Male 250 watt motor. Again, most people won't even know this is an electric bike. And it's somewhat hidden on this side by the plastic disc. Of course, that helps prevent your chain from overshifting. We have GRX components in the rear with the derailleur. Again, this is their gravel components. If you want to though, you can upgrade to Shimano's electronic shifting, the GRX DI2, that will cost you an additional $800. There are 11 speeds in the rear, and I talk a lot of more about that in the upcoming first person riding footage. 11 to 40 teeth, and up front is a 40 tooth front chain ring. They do have a clear protector here to keep your carbon frame looking good as new and we have the GRX crank on the right. On the frame, we have two sets of bottle cages, so perhaps you wanna put a bottle cage on one and then maybe a folding lock on the other. The seat post is also carbon fiber, and I also just wanted to point out that it does have a slight swoop to it. I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about these handlebars because yes, they're swept back, but they're a different type of swept back handlebar than we often see because these are pretty much the same handlebars that you'll see over in the Netherlands. Again, the aptly named Dutch, but I find these handlebars to be super comfortable. I really like the upright riding position. And one thing to keep in mind is because the stem and handlebars are all custom to this bike, this is not a bike where you're just gonna swap out the handlebars if you don't like them. So just be sure if you're looking at this electric bike, you want that upright riding position. Otherwise, you might wanna check out the Prologue. And I don't feel like I would be doing justice to this electric bike if I didn't show you how light it really is at 27 pounds. It's the lightest electric bike that's ever been on this channel. 
You can lift it up with one hand if you want to. And of course, that is the main selling point of this electric bike. It's super light, super quiet, and of course has an amazing design. All right, so that's all you need to know about the components on this electric bike, but let's get into some first person riding footage. All right, let's get into the first person riding footage on the Le Mans Dutch. Now, the first thing I'm going to show off is actually not using the assist at all because this is one of the few exceptions of electric bikes where you can most definitely pedal it. In fact, it's probably the easiest electric bike that I've ever reviewed to be able to pedal. And I am in first gear, but I could shift up second gear, third gear, fourth gear. So pedal assist is completely off, nice leisurely cadence. And you just hop on this electric bike and it unquestionably does not feel like an electric bike at all. So the nice thing is it does have a smaller battery. So if you do run, happen to run out of battery, wanna go on a, wrong, a longer ride, it simply doesn't matter because it is super pedalable. You can throw it in the back of your vehicle, throw it on any rack and nine, 10 miles an hour maybe even faster depending on your ability. I'm in fifth gear, 10 miles an hour. And I also just wanted to talk a little bit about the riding position specific to the Dutch. Of course, if you don't like this kind of swept back handlebars, you can opt for the prologue, but I just really enjoy the super swept back handlebars. Just makes me feel like I'm riding around Europe and I find them super comfortable. All right, now let's turn this bike on and go through the various pedal assist levels. So I did go into the app and turned it to sport mode, which means we're gonna get 60% in green, 80% in orange, and 100% in red. And as I've been riding around, I think those are some pretty good settings. So I have to go down and reach here to turn this on. Now it's showing me in green. Again, you can get that control up at the handlebars if you'd prefer, but you do need to reach down in order to change the pedal assist level. So I'm going to shift all the way down to first gear. And this bike is using a cadence sensor, which I actually had to ask the company because I wasn't sure, because it feels like a very natural riding experience that I could provide power all the way through all the gears, obviously 11 gears, maybe not surprising, but the motor engages nice and easily. Again, it is a smaller motor, so maybe not quite as surprising. I would shift up here though, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, maybe even sixth gear. And I can just barely hear the motor. Had faster speeds with the wind noise, you're not gonna hear the motor at all. And this feels like a really nice, Cadence, 12 miles an hour, not putting in a ton of effort. Could maybe go to seventh gear. 12 miles an hour and just performance wise, obviously a rigid front fork. On smooth pavement like this, it feels nice. Obviously you wanna avoid any potholes. You could also opt for a suspension seat post for additional comfort. All right, now I'm going to reach down and turn it into orange here. I would maybe shift up 14, shift up again, 15 miles an hour. Going about 16 miles an hour, nice and easily. So that's 80% power. I did go into 11th gear. I would probably be 10th, 10th gear feels pretty good. Take a right here. Now I'm going to hit the button again here and we'll get into red, the third pedal assist level. And again, you can tune these settings to exactly how you want them, which is really nice.
So ninth, 10th gear would be my preference, going about 15 miles an hour, going into the wind now a little bit, 17 miles an hour. I did find riding this earlier, you can comfortably cruise at 18, 19, even 20 miles an hour with no issues, even with the smaller motor, just because the bike is so light. And with 100% of the power, you do hear the motor a little bit more, but again, it's easily outweighed by the wind. And there's 18, and I feel the motor actually stopping now. So I'm assuming we're getting very close to the 20 mile per hour top speed. Again, this is a class one electric bike, no throttle, top speed of 20 miles an hour. And even the GPS is reading 20 miles per hour and you do have 11th gear if you need it. So very comfortably cruising, not putting in a ton of effort and lots of control on this electric bike. And by the way, if you wanna check out this cell phone mount, it is for sale at shop.ebikeescape.com. All right, so that is how this bike performs on flat ground. Well, let's see how it does up our large hill climb test. This is the hill that I test out all the electric bikes that I review on the channel. The GoPro makes it look so much smaller than it is, so I'll throw up a picture as well as the specs of the hill. Now, if you're considering this electric bike, it's unlikely you live in a super hilly area, but I think it's still worth going up, seeing how the 11 gears perform. And I'm going to start out in 11th gear, and I'm sure I'm going to have to shift down from there. I am already in the third pedal assist level, getting 100% of the motor power. And we'll see what it can do. Usually it's a little bit of a workout for some of these smaller motors, though I'm kind of curious in first gear, how much effort I still need to put in. So the hill is starting now, still traveling at 10 miles an hour, and my cadence is starting to slow. Let's go in 10th gear, ninth, eight, Seven. So I'd say at seventh gear, I'm actually kind of surprised. I'm still putting in some effort, but not overly exerting myself. I could go up the hill no problem here in seventh gear. So let's shift down into sixth gear. Feel some relief. Fifth gear. Let's go into fourth, third. Second, I'm gonna go into first gear. So what is really cool about this bike is super small motor, but because you have the large gear range, I can, I mean, my legs are pedaling way faster than I would prefer if you can, if you can see that. So I could actually shift up second, third, fourth gear and go up the hill at seven miles an hour. So as long as you don't expect to go up a hill fast, this bike is still capable. I think that has a lot to do with, yes, the gearing, but also just how light the bike is. So that's, that's very impressive for this bike. And another thing I'll just call out, I am a lighter weight rider at around 145 or so pounds. And these Shimano brakes are extremely good. I mean, you're only stopping a, you know, 26, 27 pound bike. Uh, but yes, very high performance. Again, it is a more premium electric bike. So not surprising that they kind of went all out with the components. All right, with that, let's get into some third person riding footage and I'll give you my concluding thoughts on the Le Monde Dutch. While you're watching, picture me riding this in a bike-friendly city somewhere in the Netherlands. Protected bike lanes, riders of all ages around me flowing through the streets with ease. Dropping off kiddos, commuting, stopping by the local bakery. This might sound idyllic, but it's the reality in the Netherlands as I experienced firsthand last fall. And with the name of this e-bike being the Dutch, it's fitting. It's exciting to see a company take inspiration from bikes in Europe and put their own spin on it. 
After all, maybe the Dutch do have this whole cycling thing figured out. If this upright riding position isn't your thing, then maybe the Prologue is a better fit, though I always lean towards recommending e-bikes with approachable step-throughs like we see on the Dutch. And if I'm giving my opinions and you're at all considering the pink colorway, I say go for it. It looks even more amazing in person. Just don't forget to use our link down in the description prior to purchase. Now this being one of the more expensive e-bikes I've reviewed on the channel at $5,495 for the base bike, it's not going to be in the budget for most people, but that doesn't mean we can't appreciate what Le Mans did here. And for those of you looking for e-bikes in this price range, then I'll highlight why it's compelling. Disregarding this being one of the cleanest designs I've seen, the bike prioritizes being lightweight and that means carbon fiber, lots of it. In practice, that means more than other e-bikes. It's an e-bike when you want it to be, but it can double as a non-electric bike for more leisurely rides as well. Plus, it's simply easier to handle and there is no intimidation factor hopping on the Dutch. If you're coming from higher end non-electric bikes, you'll appreciate the high quality Shimano components throughout. And if you're less familiar with these components, just know that the shifting is extremely smooth and the huge gear ratio means you'll never be wanting for a higher or lower gear. The 36 volt, 250 watt motor is silent and powers this lightweight e-bike with ease up to the 20 mile per hour top speed as a class one e-bike. And while it's cadence based, it's still a natural riding experience. The 250 watt hour battery might seem small, but range is extended significantly by the lightweight frame and of course pedal input from the rider. With its narrower tires, this e-bike is set up as a getting around town e-bike and if you want some more comfort, you may want to consider a suspension seat post. Accessory wise, it was nice to see the bright and cleanly integrated front and rear lights. And I'd say for those of you who want to be able to easier change pedal assist levels, the Male iWalk Trio Remote for $130 is a worthwhile upgrade. The Le Mans Dutch is unique, premium, simple, quiet, it's elegant. It's all of these adjectives that don't necessarily describe a lot of the e-bikes on the market. And if that's what you're looking for and it's in the budget, then I say go for it. Just remember to use our affiliate link down in the description before you make your purchase to help support our efforts. You'll find great support from the US-based Le Mans team and you'll undoubtedly have an e-bike that will draw attention wherever you go. Let me know what you think of the Dutch and the Prologue down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.